Hey guys, Stu here and it's middle of March things are really starting to ramp up with the food production both for the food forest and the allotment Here's Ruby putting up some onion sets After another few weeks, maybe even a month, perhaps a little bit longer when they've started to get some roots on all those will get planted out either here in the food forest that you can see on screen now just dotted around or some of them will go into more formalised beds at the allotment so what we've got here is the remnants of some um, late summer early autumn planted food some lettuces I think the variety was winter something or other whatever it was it was a variety of lettuce that specifically can be outside in the UK winter it's now started to bolt and we've also got some kale which you can see dotted around that are quite shiny green looking ones quite a vibrant green I'm also uh, showing you just what else we've got going there's a globe artichoke is that is it Violetta di Chioggia can't remember how you pronounce it another kale look you can see how it started to bolt there so in this video we're, we're basically getting rid of the lettuces and the kale going to do a few things it will give us some space back so that in the next few months as we move into spring and, and go on towards summer in the gaps that they've created I can plant some more just single spaced out food crops we'll treat them as annuals most of what's already in the food forest we'll treat as perennials so what we're doing here is some of the lettuce we gave to the chickens And then some of the leaves that were in like a really good condition, um, no holes in them, no like crispy brown edges where they've been wind scorched or anything like that. We we pick them off leaf at a time, we salvage them, and we will take those into the house to wash and eat them. Slight note of caution: old lettuce. Um, when I say old, I mean it's been in the ground a long time especially lettuce that's starting to bolt and go to flowers and seed like, like ours is it can be a little bit on the bitter side so have a think of mixing it with something and here is the last of the, the lettuce that we've picked just going into the bowl now since filming this and doing the editing I have eaten some on a sandwich with some tuna and it, it was actually okay, it was very nice the chickens love it when we're in the garden, either harvesting food or just doing the weeding because they always get thrown in lots of lovely fresh scraps. So here they are just like scratching through them, picking through them. Here's a question for you guys, leave a comment underneath and let me know please, do you also keep chickens? And do your chickens enjoy it when you throw them in the odd leaf of lettuce or the odd bit of um, dandelion leaf when you've been doing the weeding. Do yours enjoy it as much as ours do? If you can't make out that there's a hazel in there then I have done my job well disguising or averting your eyes with the daffodils because at this time of year the hazel isn't in leaf and it's because it's a young plant also it certainly won't have any nuts on it yet for a few more years um, so just to make use of the space in the times of year when it's not a food producing garden i.e. the food forest what I've done is in that little raised bed where the hazel is I planted some daffodil bulbs so at least, if nothing else if we've not got anything to eat right now from the hazel at least we've got something for our eyes to feast on so I guess what I'm saying in a roundabout way is when I was selecting plants for this food forest dual purpose or multi-use was definitely one of the considerations which I gave to most of the plants I'll be honest a few plants are just out and out indulgences but speaking of a dual purpose plant this Japanese flowering quince so look how beautiful these flowers are and this is at a time of year and there isn't really an awful lot of other stuff going on just yet other than like mainly your spring bulbs but also this Japanese flowering quince does give fruits which are edible now they're not the classic is it 
Sidonia Oblonga, the, the quince quince that everybody knows is a quince. These are in the Camomelles or Chimoelis species, however you pronounce it, is the Japanese one. Um, but the fruits are edible nonetheless. They're not quite as big as your classic stereotypical quince, but it has more than one use. We get to enjoy looking at the flowers, and then when the flowers go and they turn into fruits, later on in the year, if we're lucky, we'll have a few little quinces to pick as well. So, Ruby, in her amazing pyjamas and wellingtons combination, is now going to finish off picking the last of the kale. Um, hang on, sorry, I was just checking she's not getting compost in, in that box. <laughs> Yeah, she's picking the last of the kale, which will preserve in two different ways. The person on the right isn't Ruby, it's my other daughter, Olivia. If you wondered why Ruby's hands have suddenly gone uh, an orange colour, it's because Olivia uses her <laughs> cell tan. So the two different ways are, we put some into a freezer bag, and we did that after we'd filled up every single rack on the dehydrator. So we had full five racks on the dehydrator, plus one quite substantially full freezer bag. Another dual purpose plant that I've purposefully, too many uses of the word purpose there, dual purpose, purposefully planted into the food forest is this rosemary. Not only is it a culinary herb, which we used to cook with, it's also, I use it for something called balneotherapy. You basically put certain herbs into a bath with you. Um, but don't just take my word for it. Please, please, please do your own research because not every herb you want to be exposing yourself to if you've got other medical conditions. Tell you what, there's a video link on the card on screen now. in pots on our patio right next to the food forest you might recognize some of these plants perhaps let's just say meaning of plants videos hmm guess what there's another card appearing right now with the link this scraggly looking thing that you can see now is a white bleeding heart dicentra plant um, surprising in the sense that the plant hasn't fully shown itself for spring yet and then can you see already we've got one of the flowers right then petalheads thank you for watching this video if you liked it i was about clicking on the thumbs up button just so i know i'm making the kind of stuff that people want to see thanks a lot